Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Nina Morrison. Thanks for coming through to check out this video. I am working on the lighting situation so that you can see me from both sides. So I'm, I'm trying a few things to um to make it better. It's not perfect. It's going to be a work in progress, I think. Okay, so I want to make this video to tell you, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit about myself. Um, I was a teacher for 13 years. Um, I started out. Um, I, actually, I did a long-term student experience, you know, where I wasn't paid, um, and I did that in kindergarten, and there were um, other college students who were with me at the same school, and um, that was a pretty long time, and I had a really great kindergarten teacher to work with. Uh, I don't think she had an aide. I don't remember her having another person helping her. And then I went on to teach special ed for um, three years. I had uh, kids that were IQ 50 to 70. And that's um, fairly limited in uh, what they're able to accomplish. And they also had a lot, a lot of um, social skills. But nonetheless, we... Um, I, had, I did have an aide in that situation. Uh, myself and my aide, uh, we created activities for them to do on their level, and they really enjoyed that. and um, And they got very attached to me because I had I had them for more than one year in a row. And once they were past third grade, they went on to another school. And then I also worked teaching third grade. And um, that was at um, a couple of schools just for a year, and then three years at one school. And then our third grade left. He's, our schools were structuring the way they were um, being set up. They were changing it. Uh, so we were just going to be K through two, and third was going to another school. So then I switched to first grade, and I did first grade for five years. And then I had to stop because of um, problems with pain, and in particular, pain in my right foot that was making it very hard to um, walk around and stand as I needed to do as a teacher. And I was also having some a lot of uh, pain problems in my neck, and it was making it hard to turn my head a lot and, you know, look around at the kids and make sure they were on task and all of that. So. It's been a, um, a big relief to me to get out from under the stress and physical demands of um, being a public teacher full time. And so I then went on to looking to see if there was anything I could do online. And I found um, an opportunity where I could blog, which I had never done before, and also make videos. And so learn how to do both of those. And that's what I'm doing now. And it's a long-term process um, to make an income with this. However, it does happen eventually if you keep working at it. You just have to keep believing in it and keep working at it. And um, there's also a support community, so that's a good thing. Excuse me. And um, I play the French horn, but not recently. So basically that just means I don't have any endurance right now. Um, but I did start playing the French horn in um, seventh grade. Most of the kids had started their instruments in fifth grade, so I was a little behind. And then I went on to get really good. I practiced very hard at it, and I started to uh, get some respect and recognition from just being a good player. And so that was really cool. It was really good for me. I was kind of uh, shy in school. And then I went on to college and, you know, what was really good for me is um, the college professors had already heard me playing in high school um, because they would go to some of the concerts and um, in particular like to Allstate Band and solo and ensemble festivals and they'd heard me. So they already knew me as a player and it just made it easier for me when I had to go to college and audition for different groups, you know, it was just kind of like, oh, wow, I'm glad you're here. Um, if you want to be in, you're in, you know, it, didn't, it wasn't a big stress to audition. And my mom had been playing in the college orchestra as a cellist 
for 30 years, maybe more. And um, she really enjoyed that. Um, she's a very fine cellist, but then, you know, chose to stay home and raise her children. Um, and the college orchestra was letting community people who were good players come to the orchestra to play. So that's how she got to do that. And so there was one year when her, she and I were both in it at the same time, you know, so that was really cool. I think that was maybe a couple of years. And my younger brother, who's a violinist, and I and my mom were all three in the college orchestra one time. And, you know, that was a kind of a neat experience as well. And then I also want to mention that I love horses. Um, I've been able to read and about training, talk to people to get ideas, uh, watch training videos and work with a few horses in that capacity and, um, and fix through training some of the behaviors that they had, such as one horse was running away and kicking at the person when they were trying to catch it in the pasture. And um, just through working with it in the round pen, getting it to where the horse understood that if it tried to run away, it was going to have to work. And if it would stand still, it, it could rest. And then the amazing part about that is how those behaviors carry over into other places. So even though the horse in the pasture wasn't contained like it was in the round pen, it was still letting people um, come up and catch it instead of running away and trying to kick. So, you know, so I feel good about that. I was able to help that situation get better. And I trained um, a horse that was half Percheron, half Thoroughbred. And she was three years old. She had not been, she wasn't broke as far as like you couldn't ride her, but you could sit on her. And when I started with her and she didn't know anything. And I worked with her for a year. And I just did all kinds of things like I, that I'd read about, that I'd watched, that I'd learned about with her. Um, to, particularly on turning and bending and at the walk, just because, you know, she was just so big. And um, she came out from, uh, when she was born, she came out looking more like a Percheron. And that's not what the breeder wanted. You know, they want a big um, horse that's going to be, um, going to look like a thoroughbred, but like maybe just have like the calmer disposition of a draft horse. And maybe just be taller and maybe a little stockier. And she didn't come out that way. She came out as, as sort of the ugly duckling. <laughs> so um, that's how the barn ended up with her. And um, she was pretty big when I worked with her. After I finished, she got bigger. <laughs> she's um, enormous now. And uh, she's been sold, I believe, to um, a relative. And that lady's really enjoying her. So, um, you know, I miss her. But it was, it was still a good experience. I'm glad I did it. And also, I've had, um, I'm, I have my second golden retriever now, and I had one before who did therapy dog work, or went to um, nursing homes and hospitals, um, went to a psychiatric hospital, um, we went to a children's hospital, we went to all different places where people were sad or lonely or sick or, you know, feeling depressed or whatever, and, um, and they just pet him and made him feel better. And my current dog is also a therapy dog, but due to my medical um, conditions with my foot and neck problems that I've had, I haven't really been able to take her anywhere. But I still want to do that. I think there's still time. She's six years old and, you know, they usually live um, to be 12 or 13. Okay, so um, that's a little bit about me and... I hope that you found this informative. I'm going to see if I can put this video onto my um, main page on the right hand side where there's a, an area where there's some other things on there. I'm going to see if I can put this on there too. So um, thanks for watching and um, see you the next time. Bye.